Hey guys, let's start today's lecture on kinematics. Well, the topics for the today's session, we would start with the definition of kinematics and we'll see in which all circumstances real life three dimensional object can be modeled as a particle. At the end, we will introduce extremely simple concepts like distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. To begin with, well, you know, just think of a flying rocket or a flying satellite or a moving car or a moving airplane or a baseball or any mechanism. A bunch of things you can think of where you have a particular observation and you want to understand the position followed by that object at every instant of time. We call this as the trajectory. In principle, having trajectory or position information with us is absolutely fine. But in many of the situation, the desired trajectories is been already set and you want to understand how fast and how quick an object has to travel in order to achieve the trajectory. Then one should introduce velocity and acceleration. We introduce velocity and acceleration with the help of calculus, where we can convert motion in the form of an equation so that we could perform differentiation and integration in order to get velocity and acceleration. Technically, one can define kinematics as which is the study of geometry of motion, relate position, velocity, acceleration and time without reference to the cause of motion. For an example, the tennis ball was hit by a rocket or by a baseball bat. We are not at all concerned about the cause of motion. We are only interested in the aspect of motion. Whereas kinetics deals with the forces that are required to cause the motion and the mass and inertial effect of that object while it is in motion. Technically, one can define kinetics as which is the study of relation between the forces acting on a body, the mass of a body and the motion of a body. Let's understand the role of kinematics and kinetics in case of practical design. Here I have an engine. Engine uses fuel and air mixed together to form an explosive mixture. The basic job of the engine is to convert explosive energy into motion. To contain explosion, engine uses cylinder and piston. Piston slides up and down inside the cylinder. In order to set the wheels in motion, one should convert up and down motion of the piston into circular motion. We do it with the help of a mechanism. Here we are not going into the detailed design aspects of the mechanism, but you can see here how the up and down motion of the piston is converted as the circular motion of the crankshaft, which is the scope of kinematics. Here we are not at all bothered about the forces that are causing the motion. When it comes to kinetics, one should know how much is the thrust force required and parts must be assigned with the adequate physical sizes. There could be other aspects like balancing and vibration and so forth. With this much preamble, let's move on to particle kinematics. Hereafter, we keep on saying motion of a particle and particle kinematics. In real world, there is nothing like a particle. Every object has three dimension. Then what is the deal in dealing with the particle? The answer is below. If the physical dimension of the object is so small compared to the radius of curvature of its path or if the rotation is irrelevant for the analysis perspective and if the rotation is absent in the motion, then every point on the object has same position, velocity and acceleration. Instead of tracking each and every point, we track the motion of center of mass point. In above cases, a three-dimensional object can be modeled as a particle. For an example, look at the motion of satellite. You can assume the dimension of the satellite compared to the radius. In this case, we can model this satellite as a particle. And in example number two, in the case of the motion of a car, the motion of the wheels are irrelevant for the motion of the car as a single entity. Here also we can model this motion as the particle motion. In example number three, you can look at the aeroplane which is traveling in a straight line and rotation is absent. In this situation also, we can model this aeroplane as a particle. Let's move on to particle kinematics and the simplest motion possible by the particle is the rectilinear motion. For an example, apple falling from a tree and a car is moving in a straight line track. If you track the trajectory of that object, it would be a straight line. Let's assume you are standing here and somebody come and ask you, where is your house? There could actually be two answers for that. One could be it is 10 kilometers away from this place 
and second could be it is 2 kilometers towards south the former way of saying would be the total length of its path or journey and we express this quantity as distance which is a scalar quantity and the later way of saying would be the shortest possible distance between the initial position and final position along with the direction the point to be noted is the distance can never be the negative quantity because it is the measure of length and length can never be negative accordingly the distance whereas displacement can be negative can be positive sometimes it can be zero we demonstrate all this by taking some examples on example number 1 i have a motion of a particle on number line at time t1 the particle is at origin at time t2 the particle travel distance of 5 meters at time t3 particle is back where it was at t1 at time t4 the particle travel back by a distance of 2 more meters and i would like to calculate the total distance and net displacement in this case and the total distance would be the total length of its path on the right side i have 5 meters plus 5 meters on the left side of the number line i have 2 more meters and the total distance would be 5 meters plus 5 meters plus 2 meters the net displacement is the final position minus initial position in this case minus 2 minus 0 which would give me minus 2 meters in one dimensional cases negative sign indicates the direction in this case is at 2 meters towards the left in example number 2 a man has to go 6 meter due north 3 meters due east and 2 meters due south to reach his house and we would like to calculate total distance and net displacement in this case and the total distance would be 6 meters plus 3 meters plus 2 meters and to calculate net displacement we should know the shortest distance between starting position and initial position we draw a line which connect the starting position and the ending position by line and the magnitude length of this line along with the direction would give me the displacement in this case we have to use the pythagoras theorem and one side we have 3 meters other side it we have 4 meters and the sum of the squares would give me 5 meters and the direction would be towards northeast in example number 3 a particle is moving in a circle and it completes one revolution and we would like to calculate the total distance and net displacement in this case and the total distance is the length of its path it's the total length of its circumference in this case it is 2 pi r and the net displacement would be zero in this case because the starting position and the ending position is the same we can conclude here the total distance will be always be the positive quantity whereas displacement sometimes it is negative sometimes it is positive sometimes it can be zero let's change the gears and let's move on to speed and velocity we know the definitions of speed speed is the rate at which an object covers distance whereas velocity is the rate at which an object changes its position let's define them mathematically consider a particle occupies position p at time t and the corresponding co position coordinate is x at later time t plus delta t it occupies position p dash and the corresponding position is given by adding small displacement delta x to the coordinate p and let's define average velocity for the time interval delta t as the quotient of displacement delta x and time interval delta t similarly the average speed would be the quotient of distance and time interval delta t for an example if you want to travel from point a to point b which is 100 kilometers away assume you started with 100 kmph for 30 minutes and you took rest for 15 minutes and you started off with 200 kmph for 15 minutes to reach point b in this case if we calculate the average speed the total distance would be 100 kilometers and corresponding time travel is 1 hour and average speed is 100 over 1 which gives us 100 kmph though average speed or velocity does not convey about the intermediate information but it can tell you what is the constant speed that you have to travel in many of the situation we are interested to know the velocity at particular time or at particular instant or we call this as the instantaneous velocity we can also determine the instantaneous velocity of the particle at time t by allowing time interval delta t to be infinitesimally small or which almost approaches to zero then mathematically one can define instantaneous velocity as limit 
delta t is tending to 0 delta x over delta t which is the definition of derivative which gives us dx over dt and the SI units for the velocity and speed is meter per second and you can also observe the magnitude of instantaneous velocity is the instantaneous speed like distance speed always be the positive quantity whereas velocity can be positive or can be negative or sometimes it can be zero as well let's take few examples in, in example number one particle is moving in a circular path we are asked to find the average velocity after of revolution we know average velocity is equal to net displacement over time and we know the net displacement is 2r and constant speed also means the average speed of the particle then the total length of the path would be pi r and the time would be t from here total time taken t is equal to pi r by v naught if we substitute in average velocity then the total average velocity of the particle would be 2 v naught by pi in question number two a car is moving in a straight line and half of the distance it travels with v naught velocity and remaining part of the distance was covered with velocity v1 for half of the time and with v2 for the other half of the time and we would like to calculate the average speed of the car you know average speed is equal to total distance which is d and the total time travel which is t1 for the half of the distance and 2t for the remaining half of the distance you know constant velocity which is the average velocity in the first half v0 is equal to d by 2 over t1 and in the second half the total distance is equal to d by 2 which is equal to t v1 plus t v2 and from that we get t as d over v1 plus v2 if you substitute t1 and t in average speed the final equation will be 2 v0 into v1 plus v2 by v1 plus v2 plus 2 v0 let's move on to acceleration we could sense acceleration by speeding up or by speeding down our vehicle one can define acceleration as the rate of change of velocity of an object with respect to time for an example we take a ball just leave it why does it move on even though the initial velocity is zero here acceleration changes the velocity of the ball with respect to the time by change in velocity there is a change in position in this case the thing which is causing the motion is acceleration due to the gravity consider a particle whose velocity is v at time t at later time t plus delta t the velocity of the particle is v plus delta v and the corresponding position is p dash as similar as velocity we define average and instantaneous acceleration in similar terms and the average acceleration is given by delta v over delta t whereas instantaneous acceleration is given as dv over dt the SI units for the acceleration meter per second square let's look at the possible motion cases you already know positive velocity means the particle is moving in the right direction or positive direction respectively negative velocity means the particle is moving in the opposite direction or left direction in case one particle has higher velocity at position p dash in this case acceleration is positive which is pointing in the right direction or positive direction in case number two at position p dash particle has lesser velocity than the particle which was at p in this case though the velocity is pointing in the opposite direction but in this case still the acceleration is positive because the difference in the final velocity and the initial velocity would be positive in case number three the particle has lesser velocity at p dash than when it was at p in this case acceleration is negative pointing towards opposite direction in case number four the particle has higher velocity at position p dash than when it was at p in this case acceleration is negative pointing towards opposite direction